Okay, so question 18 in the final exam review. Having got a spring question. So, in, since it's question 18, that's about halfway through the exam, it's more likely that this will be a Hooke's Law question rather than a spring potential energy question. So, just sort of looking through the details here, so the figure at right or below right shows two springs attached to a block that can slide on a frictionless surface. In the block's equilibrium position, where it has no net force, the left spring is compressed by 2 centimeters. What is the net force in the block if it has moved 15 centimeters to the right of its equilibrium position? So this is a pretty challenging question. So here we've got K1, so I call this sort of the left spring, spring 1. And I'll use a particular color, use a sort of dark blue color for, uh, to indicate values uh, according to this left spring or spring 1. I'm going to use a red pen here for spring 2. So let's first look at the equilibrium, this idea of the block's equilibrium position where there's no net force. And let's consider a free body diagram um, when it's in its equilibrium position. So in its equilibrium position, I'm just going to consider the horizontal forces. I know that the spring one here, or the left spring, is compressed by two centimeters. So if the spring is compressed, it will push on the block to the right. So I'm going to draw a force here on the block. So this is a force on the block by spring one, where one is the left spring. And we can find the magnitude of that force because we have the spring constant and we have the change in length of the spring. So F B1 is going to be K1 delta L1. So that's 10 newtons per meter times 2 centimeters. But convert to meters, 0 0.02. That gives us 0.2 newtons. So for the net force on the block to be 0, the right spring, or spring 2, has to push to the left with a same size force. So there must also be a force here by spring 2. So this is FB2. It must also equal 0.2 newtons. So we can sort of, knowing it's spring, spring constant, we can, and know the size of the force, we can figure out delta L uh, for this uh, spring 2. So delta L2 would be F in the block by 2 divided by K2. So that's 0.2 newtons divided by 20 newton meters, 20 newton per meter. So that's only 0 0.01 meters. So this one is this spring would be compressed at uh, one centimeter. Okay, so in the equilibrium position, the left spring is compressed two centimeters, pushing the block to the right, and the right spring is compressed one centimeter, pushing the block to the left equally to give it no net force. And then what the question states that if we move the block to the right, by 15 centimeters, what would the new net force be? So I'm going to sort of separate this work here. So let's consider a situation where the block has moved 15 centimeters to the right of the equilibrium. Okay. So we have to take this information into account. So again, think about the horizontal forces. So in the no net force, the left spring, spring one, is compressed two centimeters. So if you move it 15 centimeters to the right, two centimeters will bring it back to equilibrium plus another 13 centimeters. So it means that it's stretched 13 centimeters. The left spring is stretched 13, 13 centimeters when you move it 15 centimeters to the right. So that's negating the, the first two centimeters of compression plus another 13 in stretching. So that means it, if it's stretched 
13 centimeters to the right, the, the spring one will pull back to the left with the force. And I've drawn all these to, to perfect scale, so this will be the F on the block by spring 1 in this new situation. And FB1 will be equal to K1 delta L1. So in this case, it's again yeah, still the same spring constant, of course, but this time it's stretched 13 centimeters of 0.13 meters. So it exerts a force of 1.3 newtons to the left. Okay. And then to figure out spring one, sorry, spring two was initially compressed one centimeter in the equilibrium position. So then if we push it to the right, we're, f we're compressing it even further. So one centimeter from compression plus another 15 centimeters of compression gives it a total compression of 16 centimeters. So spring two will also exert a rightward force quite large, much larger than the spring one. So F B two. So F B one here. So F B two will be equal to K two times delta L two. So this is going to be twenty newtons per meter times the point one six meters. That gives a force of 3.2 newtons. So again, the, so the harder part of this problem is probably thinking about the 0.13, figuring out this distance out and figuring out the, dis the compressions and stretches of the springs. So we can now find the net force. They're both in the same direction, so we can sum them, and they're both to the left. So we have 1.3 newtons plus, uh, this is the magnitude. Whereas the magnitude is going to be equal to 4.5 newtons. So pretty challenging question. Lots to consider, considering the equilibrium position, question, information given in the question. Um, and then carefully thinking about what this 15 centimeters to the right means for each individual spring. And also some vectors in here as well to consider that they're that uh, in the final in this 50 centimeters to the right spring one is pulling to the left and spring two is pushing to the left so we can sum these two to give you the correct force.